I'm talking with uh, Mr. E. Freeman. So, why do you think Hakim uh, won? Uh, Hakim is a talented uh, elected official that decided to go into politics. And tonight is the, the uh, results, as the results come in, and we celebrate his big victory. And we are very optimistic that he's going to be a great representative in Washington, D.C., for the Jewish community and for all communities. So, uh, tonight is a good night and a uh, good future for everybody. So why do you think Hakeem won tonight? Well, I think that he had a message that really resonated with people in the community. Uh, and his record as a legislator and his activism in the community uh, really made him a clear choice for a lot of voters. Well, I think what is so fantastic victory for East New York, for the East New York community tonight to send such a vibrant young man to Washington, not only to represent East New York, but all the other congressional districts and the new eight congressional districts. We're, we're so happy. And now, uh, who will be running against Charles Barron's wife? Christopher Banks, a young 28-year-old, a lifetime East New Yorker is running against her. We're so excited to get new blood out in the arena in East New York. New ideas, new vision, new energy. The Russian community came out in a major force. Where do you, uh, why is that? Like, what happened? Well, two reasons for that. We have an amazing candidate in Hakim Jeffrey. Absolutely wonderful guy, rational, effective representative, extremely knowledgeable, and a real man. And we have a foreign enemy. And when we have a foreign enemy, we choose to do it amazingly well. I think because Rabbi Tukorsky here brought out the Russian Jews to vote. And that's what we need. Uh,
of the primary for Cong Democratic primary for Congress in the 8th Congressional District. And the next congressman from the 8th Congressional District, none other than Hakeem Jeffries. <laughs> Threatening to tear this country apart. 
And since that moment, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, we've made tremendous progress in America. But I still think it's relevant for us to ask the question, how do we create a more perfect union? Because while we've come a long way, we still have a long way to go. We still got to deal with racism yeah. and anti-Semitism yeah. and homophobia. Yeah. We still got a long way to go. And when I look all across the congressional district, there are people who are struggling. Yeah. Children trapped in a failed public school system. Yeah. Yes. Parents struggling with the crushing weight of a yeshiva education and the high cost that is imposed on them. Families in desperate need of affordable housing. We've got too many guns and too few jobs. And there are seniors who are struggling to put food on the table, clothing on the back, or get access to the medicine that they need. But I believe, based on the totality of my experiences, that public service and government, which is smart, yet compassionate, can make a difference. Government must provide for the poor. Work for working families, make sense for the middle class, stand up for senior citizens, and innovate in the inner city. And since this wonderful collection of people, this gorgeous mosaic of the 8th Congressional District, representing people of all persuasions and races and religions who came together to support this campaign, and I got to thank the wonderful volunteers who were in the office each and every day for almost a year, making sure that we were successful. And because of the efforts of so many people, I'm going down to Washington to stand up for the education of our children, stand up for senior citizens, stand up for job creation, stand up for our civil rights. Stand up to protect senior citizens and stand up for our President Barack Obama. Because I think he's doing a good job and he's got enemies all around him. But Brooklyn sent him a message today along with Queens that help is on the way. Because we want to help him, help the community of the 8th Congressional District. I know we face adversity in America, but we've overcome adversity in the past, in the march toward a more perfect union. We overcame adversity during the Civil War. We overcame adversity during the Great Depression. We overcame adversity during World War II. We overcame adversity in the Jim Crow South. And we overcame adversity here in New York City in the aftermath of September 11th, I'm confident that we can overcome adversity again. We're striking a new chapter. We're going to leap forward. This is a fresh start. I'm going down to Washington to do the people's business. And we can all be part of the march for a more perfect union. God bless you and God bless the eighth congressional Quick question. So what do you think the key to the victory was? Obviously, other than your fantastic campaign workers. Well, you know, we knew very early on that we were going to want to run a campaign that was based on issues uh, that spoke directly to what we believe people in all communities throughout the congressional district would like to see from their next member of Congress. Uh, and we ran a very detailed, oriented, targeted campaign where we spoke to voters in a precise way beginning in January uh, and accumulated momentum and energy that wasn't always perceived uh, above the surface, but that we knew was building uh, all throughout this campaign. You know, the contrast in this race was clear. I've got a track record of success. I've worked together with others. We've built coalitions. We've gotten things done in Albany. These are serious times. Congress is a serious job. We knew the people of the 8th Congressional District would want a serious member to represent them. The numbers all throughout this district, including in East New York, show that that's the case. What kind of impact did Townsend's endorsement of Barron have? Did you get that? I think the numbers speak for themselves.
Well, what were some of the numbers? I mean, you said in East New York you did very high school well uh, based on the fact that that's Barron's base. What about other parts of the district? I was talking to Brooke Presley, for example. He said that we did very well in Brighton Beach, for example. We did very well in Brighton Beach. We did very well in Bethesda Stuyvesant. We did very well in Clinton Hill. We did very well in Fort Greene. We did very well in Howard Beach. We did very well in East New York. We did very well in Caribbean American Canarsie. There's not a single corner of this district that we didn't do well in. Uh, and that's a testament, I believe, uh, to what the voters wanted in this race, which we always understood would be different than what the political pundits and the chattering class may suggest uh, that the voters were interested in as it relates to this race. This is a testament to the spirit of democracy as it relates to the ability of the voters to perceive the choices that they have presented to them uh, and to make a decision uh, which is in the best interest as they determine uh, it to be. So what's your first priority? You're going to be after you beat, obviously, the other candidates in Washington. Well, I'm waiting for the, the general election debate, which I had promised to uh, participate in. But, you know, there's a foreclosure crisis that is creeping all across the 8th Congressional District in neighborhoods like Bedford, Stuyvesant, Canarsie, uh, and East New York. Those three neighborhoods have amongst the highest foreclosure rates of any uh, neighborhood in the entire city of New York, and all three are in one congressional district. We even got parts of Marine Park uh, that are experiencing significant foreclosure rates. I think we've got to make sure, uh, not waiting until January, starting tomorrow, that we uh, connect the settlement that was reached with the Obama administration, Attorney General Eric Snyderman, and the financial institutions, uh, and download that into the living rooms of the distressed homeowners all across this congressional district, particularly in Bethesda, Stuyvesant, East New York, and Canarsie. We have an opportunity to make government relevant in this area. $26 billion settlement, loan modifications, refinancing, principal reduction, legal assistance that's available. We've got to connect that settlement with the homeowners who are in distress. That's probably my most immediate priority. You mentioned uh, tuition relief uh, for the Jewish uh, schools. How would you go about that? Well, I think we've got to look at parochial school education uh, in the context of Christian schools, Jewish schools, Muslim schools. As I traveled all across this district, it was clear to me uh, that there were uh, religious schools that were struggling, but parents who were making a genuinely held decision whether that was in the yeshiva context, whether that was in the Christian school context, or even in the Muslim school context, that the most appropriate education available to them was a parochial school education. And I believe that we as a government have an obligation to try and support that. For what means? Well, we can look at um, tax credits, uh, reimbursements. This has been done in other states. It's been done with the tax code as it relates to supporting religious institutions in the United States tax code right now. So we can explore that uh, as we move forward. The uh, details will come down the road, but it's certainly an issue that I'm committed to. Everyone within the education reform movement understands that I'm committed to that issue. I've talked about it all throughout this campaign and will continue to do so. Would that undermine the public schools? I, I certainly won't undermine the public schools. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is I'm committed to the public school system. My children are in the public school system. I'm a graduate of Midwood High School. The public school system will continue to thr flourish uh, and I've made the ultimate commitment to that system uh, as it relates to sending my children to that uh, uh, system. But we will uh, support public schools, uh, we'll support parochial schools, we're going to support good schools, a good strong education. We're standing here uh, at the victory party for Hakeem Jeffries. First of all, it's a great kiddish chef. The back of the community came out unanimously, uh, came out and rejected the politics of Charles Barron. It's a very strong message uh, that we support Hakeem Jeffries because Hakeem is really the future of the political party. And you know, to his credit, you know, a lot of people say one thing in one neighborhood, another thing in a different neighborhood. Hakeem has been consistent throughout his support of Eric Stroll, and his support of Yeshiva education. Even tonight, in his victory speech, he explicitly said that he will be someone who will fight in Congress to try to help relieve the tuition burden. It's very gratifying for the Jewish community that really came out full force for, Char for, for Hakeem Jeffries and to repudiate Charles Barron. I think the message, honestly, is that we're done with the politics of hate. We've come a very long way here in New York City, and the black and Jewish communities are working together to achieve great things. And Hakeem is an example of the kind of terrific things that we can do. We had some really great folks out there who really did a, a lot of work, and we're very grateful to the community for really coming together in a significant uh, way. I want to thank uh, my friend, uh, Hospital Bennett, and Leon Goldenberg, 
uh, and uh, uh, many, many folks in the Russian-American Jewish community who were very, very active, including uh, Rabbi Tukarski and uh, some of the great people at uh, Kojo of Flatbush who volunteered uh, their time. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of folks really today, they called me up and said, what can I do? And we had literally dozens of people who were out there knocking on doors, calling people up, trying to bring people out, not just anti-Baron, but also pro-Hakim. Because the idea of having a democratic elected official who's a strong supporter of Eretz Yisrael, a strong supporter of yeshivas, a strong supporter and understands the needs that our community has, I think is something that's very significant, that's very powerful, and I believe that Hakim is a rising star in democratic politics, and I think we're going to be proud of tonight for many years to come in Eretz Yisrael. So what do you think of tonight's decisive victory? Literally, he won. Hakeem Jeffrey won in every single district that he was running in, everywhere. Well, as far as uh, our community is concerned, we, uh, at this point, I can rattle off all the names of the New York 8 communities in the district. Uh, the people have spoken kept saying all along, the elected officials have spoken, the newspapers have given the endorsements, then the people have to come out and vote. Baruch Hashem, no doubt, we not look at all the numbers yet, we're going to study the numbers because we have very important elections coming up, we have a mayoral race coming up, we have a presidential race coming up this coming November. Our community is being watched by politicians, by the media, by, by really everybody. People want to know if we vote. For many years we didn't vote and our concerns were not listened to. Baruch Hashem, we have excellent representation. We have representation in the Assembly, we have representation in the State Senate, we have representation in the City Council. Very capable elected officials who are representing our community. They are representing our needs and our concerns because we're voting. Today is no different. We voted, we sent a very strong message. We sent a very strong message to repudiate hatred. We sent a message to repudiate prejudice. We're not interested in divisive behavior. The style of Charles Barron has been repudiated. Our community has spoken. In Baruch Hashem, we have joined together with many communities to stand tall and say we can unite and we can move forward. We can do good things when we come out and vote. So I'm, of course, Baruch Hashem, very gratified. It is a very big win for our community. It's a big win for, uh, for, for the, really, for the city. And, and really, I, I gather it's really a big win for the country. You can know, imagine if Charles Barron would beat uh, the congressman tomorrow. But that's not going to happen. And what do you say? Uh, all the politicians were saying how Hakeem is bridging all the communities. He didn't just go to one community and say one thing, go to a different community, give another speech. Is that something unique? Like you haven't seen that in a while from politicians where he was really uniting everybody together. He spoke about Jewish education, which was absolutely incredible that he really said this is a major issue. In the Daily News editorial on Sunday, they made a point, I think, excuse me, in the New York Post editorial, they made a point of saying that he's a champion for school choice. That is a very important issue for our community. There are a lot of issues that are important to our community. We're not going to agree with Hakeem Jeffries on everything, that's for sure. And we don't agree with him on everything. But there's a lot that we do agree on. We agree on the safety and security of our Israel. We agree on the need for education. Every speech he gives talks about education. Education is the number one issue in our community. It is the most important issue, and it is the issue that bridges all of our community together, from right to left and center. Everybody is struggling with yeshiva education. Everybody is struggling. Hakeem Jeffries understands that. I'm very confident that we'll have an opportunity to discuss it with him, to talk with him, to advise him, to at least have an avenue to, to really a door that is open. He went to every part of our community, and when we started this process, we went to him and we said, you have to reach out. You have to advertise in our community, you have to advertise in the media, you have to reach out to the people and make them understand you're not just looking for their votes, you're looking to connect with them. I think today's election sends a very strong message that any elected official that is looking for the support of the Orthodox Jewish community needs to speak to our issues. When you speak to our issues, we will listen, and then we will judge you on what your positions are. There's absolutely no question about it. This is an election that will be watched and is being watched, and there are others coming along very shortly in the future. The community has to vote, continue to vote, let the elected officials do their job, let the community ask them do their job, together as a team, all of us together, I think in Mitzvah we can see continuous progress. We should have tremendous yacht to the